You hear the roar of the crowd surge you on. Carolina against Washington. Game 7 of the first round of the 2019 playoffs. The series has been back and forth, but so far every game has been won by the home team. Washington is at home tonight, and surely the home crowd will be an advantage for them. The home team has won 59% of all Game 7s played since the format was introduced in 1939. But in the end, when it all matters, Carolina, against all odds, win on the road and come out on top 4-3 in double overtime. Hurricanes keep it alive. Williams touch the net. Score! The Carolina Hurricanes win Game 7. I'm Decoding Hockey, and today I'm going to explore the extent to which the notion of home ice advantage exists in the NHL. In 1992, Cornea and Caron proposed a conceptual framework to explain home advantage in sport. They describe it as the term used to describe the consistent finding that home teams in sport win over 50% of the games played under a balanced schedule. In the NHL, home teams have won 55.13% of games played since the 2012-13 season. Home advantage appears to exist. Cornea and Caron propose four factors which influence the psychology and the performance of players as a way to explain why home advantage might exist. These four factors are namely the crowd, learning about a venue, travel, and the rules. Crowd factors are perhaps the most obvious. A home crowd will support their team. Your player lays on a big hit and the crowd surges. A goalie makes a flashy save and the crowd will make sure he knows his performance was appreciated, giving them more confidence. The crowd can also provide noise to put off an opponent. The effect of this is a psychological reinforcement for the home team. The study in 1994 showed that only the crowd density was related to game outcomes in the NHL, but not the crowd scale. A smaller but a louder crowd has a greater effect than a larger and quieter one. Overall, the crowd can provide a large psychological advantage to the home team. A second factor, learning related to a venue, talks about how home teams adapt their play styles to their home arenas. For example, in baseball, the Boston Red Sox players are advantaged by learning to hit home runs over the green monster. As they play 50% of their games there, it makes sense for them to adapt their play to that arena. In football, the Steelers would have an advantage on a cold day in Pittsburgh against the Buccaneers, who are used to playing in sunny Florida. But these kinds of venue and environment-specific changes have little effect in the NHL, as ice size is regulated and games are all played indoors. Despite this, when teams change venues, the extent of their home advantage changes. Of 22 teams that relocated between 1982 and 2000, 15 of these had a high home advantage, winning about 70% of their games at home. After a change in venue, their home advantage dropped to win only 55% of the first 10 games after the move. However, seven teams which had low home advantages pre-move, winning only 32% of the games, improved to win about half of their home games after the move. This suggests that moving changes a home team's psychology. Winning teams are attached to winning venues. And while the change has no tangible effect on the surface, the environment, or on the fans, it still negatively impacts the results. Overall, while a small impact, a positively associated venue can have positive implications for home team advantage. Travel factors relate to various aspects of away teams travel. Teams will often play a series of games as a road trip. For example, in 2018-19 season, the Tampa Bay Lightning played games in Winnipeg, Vancouver, Calgary, and Edmonton in one trip to cut down the number of times that they would need to fly to Western Canada. In the year 2000, a team of researchers analyzed a number of effects, including the number of days that the visitor's road trip was, the distance they traveled on the road trip, the number of days off they had before a game, the distance they traveled between games, and the visiting team's net distance from home. Of these, only one factor was seen to be significant in hockey and that was that the longer a road team is on a road trip, 
the less prevalent than home advantage seems to be. During the first games of a trip, visiting team performance is at its worst. Change in routines are greatest during these initial games, and players have trouble acclimatizing to this at the beginning of a road trip. However, this would develop as the road trip goes on, and as the trip progresses, the visiting team performance improves. This would also be explained by the team's cohesiveness. As teams spend more time together over the course of a road trip, the players are more likely to interact and communicate with each other. They might build a greater level of trust in each other, or be able to strategize over dinner. In terms of home advantage, this decreases with the length of the opponent's road trip. Finally, rule factors are where rules systematically favor the home team. There are no systematic studies on the effect of rule changes in the NHL, and this is due to the difficult nature of isolating rules as a variable, because they often stay constant for long periods of time. However, there is one recent change that we can investigate ourselves. For the 2015-16 season, the NHL changed rule 76.4, face-off procedure. This rule initially stated that the visiting team's player must place their stick on the ice before the home team's. This rule was changed. This rule was changed to say the defending player must place their stick on the ice before the attacking player, with the theory being that the second player is able to react to the first and therefore has an advantage. To see if this change had an attack on whether home teams won less faceoffs, we can look at the change in faceoff percentage. Using data from puckbase.com, in the four seasons before the change, home teams won 51.8% of faceoffs. After the change, home teams won 51.5%. It's a small difference, but it suggests that previously, the rules provided a small advantage to home teams. And this change equates to about 200 faceoffs that a home team might have otherwise expected to win in a year. This doesn't afford a great advantage, but in very tactical situations, such as the last seconds of a period, this change might be influential. There are a few other rules that provide a tactical home advantage. The first of these is rule 82.1, the line change. Providing arguably the most influential advantage, a home team is able to react to the opposition and ensure that the matchups they want to see on the ice are played out. For example, if the Jets see Edmonton put out the McDavid line, they might send out 6'5 Adam Lowry, along with his other defensive forward line mates, to try and shut them down. However, if Edmonton play the Anna Shahan and Archibald line, then the Jets could deploy their top offensive scoring line of Connor, Shifley and Wheeler. The tactical advantage this rule provides has not been quantified, and while managing line time and freshness, teams will often tend to put lines of equal strength against each other in the confidence that their players will perform better. However, in key game situations, the home teams are widely acknowledged to be in an advantageous strategic position by this rule. The final tactical advantage offered to home teams is if the game reaches a shootout. Rule 84.4 states that the home team shall have the choice of whether to shoot first or second. And I'll talk more about the shootout a bit later. Now that we have an understanding of some of the factors that might con contribute to home advantage, let's see if it exists in the NHL and explore under what situations it does or doesn't hold. A 2017 study set to examine the magnitude of home advantage as games progressed from regulation to overtime and into the shootout, while adjusting for team quality. Of all 10,560 games from 2005-06 to 2013-14, 76.5% finished in regulation, 10% in overtime and 13% in the shootout. We've seen before that the home team wins 55% of all games since 2013-14. However, in this study, the home team wins 56.6% of games that end in regulation, 54.2% which end in overtime, and 47.6% which end in the shootout. Now this data is from the era of 5v5 overtime, so the game is played under the same conditions and rules in overtime as it is in regulation. It's unclear as to why there is a drop in performance as the game moves beyond regulation given it's played in the same conditions. To understand these findings, the research is adjusted for the quality of the teams involved. This was determined by comparing the goal differential for two teams. The home advantage of an inferior team, that is one with a worse goals differential than their opponent, was increased between regulation and overtime. In this high pressure environment, the tactical and emotional advantages offered to home teams by the four factors that we talked about earlier may help their chances. However, 
The home advantage of a superior team decreased by 3% heading into overtime. The researchers suggested that the teams may experience what they call a psychological letdown. This is the idea that by having not beaten a weaker opponent in regulation time when they really were expected to, the players experience a slight reduction in performance during overtime. The odds of winning for a home team further decrease when entering a shootout, despite the tactical advantage of getting to choose whether to shoot first or second. In the shootout, both superior and inferior home teams perform worse than away teams. Inferior team decline can be explained by the reduction in players involved during a shootout period compared to regular play. During regular play, star power is sort of evened out, as all four lines must contribute. However, in the shootout, only the best three players get to perform. To further explain it, the authors again turn to psychology. When playing in front of a home crowd, players may feel more pressure to perform and change their behaviour. Here we see a shooter who has a fast run in and beats the goalie with a slick move. Couture will be the first shooter for the Sharks. And the fans trying to intimidate him, he probably doesn't even hear him, and he scores. However, with the game on the line at home, we see the same shooter have a slower build up towards the crease. They change their mechanics, and in the end, they miss their shot. So Logan Couture with an opportunity here to continue it, and Couture comes in. And he's stopped by Kemper! McEwen et al. in 2012 further explore this concept by isolating win imminent and loss imminent situations to show that home advantage plays out differently in each case. In a sample size of over 2,000 shootout shots, when a win is imminent, such as when leading 2-1 after two shots, where a third goal would win the game, home shooters were less likely to score than an away shooter. The home shooters choke under the pressure of obtaining the winner's identity in front of their own fans. However, when a loss is imminent, say you're down 2-1 after two shots where a miss loses the game, the home shooters perform better than the away shooters. Here, home advantage manifests itself differently given the game situation. Being at home is detrimental when attempting to strike a final winning blow, but it's empowering when on the brink of defeat. By looking at all the examples presented, home ice advantage can be instilled to a psychological advantage or disadvantage applied to players in certain game situations. Playing in front of a loud, supportive crowd, at a venue in which you have a winning history, in a routine you're accustomed to, with the tactical advantage afforded by the rules, all lead to improved chances to win. However, if you've underperformed when expected to win, or if you're shooting with the game on your stick, while despite being mechanically the same actions, these have psychological disadvantages for stronger home teams. In terms of applying this to fantasy hockey, Home ice advantage is a real phenomenon in the NHL. The majority of games finish in regulation, and 56% of those games are won by the team that's playing at home. So if you're debating between two goalies who have equal advanced stats, similar opponent strengths, and have similar runs of form, then you'd be advantaged by picking the goalie who's going to play more of their games at home, as they're more likely to walk away with the W. In the COVID era, the effects of the crowd, the venue, and travel will all be eliminated, as teams are playing in hub cities. Therefore, home ice advantage is reduced solely to the benefits gained from having the final choice as to which line is played on the ice. It'll be interesting to see the impact of this factor alone on the performance of home teams, and potentially isolate how much of the home advantage can be attributed to the design of the rules, and how much is truly down to us, the fans. Do you have any insights into home advantage? Do you just want to argue that your team has the best fans? Please leave a comment below and let me know your thoughts.